Okay, so here's how Osiris, as we're flying by right now, we just flew by. Here's Osiris, the head there, the corpse looking head right there. And so here's his body. And um, a cool story about Osiris, Isis, and Set, and Horus is a uh, big love triangle. And Set uh, is brothers with Is Osiris and Isis, Nephthys. Horus is the son of Isis and Osiris. Anubis is the son of Set and Nephthys. Some say Osiris and Nephthys. And um, so that leads to a story of that Set was jealous of Osiris, maybe because of Nephthys and Anubis, the result. And so he killed Osiris, cut him up, cut him in half. Right here, it's, he's actually, his the head cuts across Osiris here because Osiris is, doesn't stop right there. It extends to this Apis bull backbone through here to the the uh, energetic formation right here which is a, is in this tailbone here of the apis bull which is also osiris's um the apis bull is a uh, representation of osiris and so the jed pillar which is a symbol that symbolizes osiris's tailbone where the magic is and that's this right spot right here too so Anyway, so this whole thing is Osiris, and Set is cutting across to right here, so Set literally cut Osiris in half here, and the story is he cut him in like 13 pieces, 14 pieces, and scattered him all around, but uh, Isis uh, originally Set tricked Osiris into getting into a box, and he nailed it shut and threw it into a river. And there just happens to be a river right here. It was flowing that day. I was sitting right here meditating. And uh, Isis took Isis years to find Osiris in the box. She found him in a tamarisk tree, which grow along this river here, here and there. And she resurrected Osiris with the help of Anubis and Thoth. And then she became pregnant with a horse. So a kind of an immaculate conception story again. Um, and then Set cut, um, killed Osiris and cut him, cut him in pieces so she couldn't resurrect him. So here he is. He's actually literally cutting across Osiris here, which is this whole thing, which is kind of neat that this, this is playing into the story. And, um, so it also looks like uh, Horus could be found back here, the head of a uh, falcon and bird back here. Let's see if I can move it around here. So you can see this radius right here, this curve of the mountains here, as the, as the two wings, the wings going up and a wing going up this way with the bird's head right here. That's also part of Set's ears right here. So Horus battled with Set for a long time after Osiris's death and for revenge against his father's death. So, uh, so these two are touching right here. Also, there's looks like a vulture head right here. Uh, that's neck bits. Get way up. You see this looks like a head right here. It's the mother, mother um, symbol. This vulture with wings coming down, like the depictions of the vultures with the wings coming down in flight, and then the tail feathers continuing out. So this is the head comes around with the wings that come down in flight. So I can see that. How can the ancient people see that? That's the that's the real question. Um, 
So are the, are the ETs involved in this, relaying this information, or showing the people that lived here in the Gila Valley this area, this stuff right here? Did they show them this? Or to get a little bit deeper with the conscious, consciousness and uh, the are the aliens in the ground here in the earth? Are they trans dimensional beings? Have they always been here. Uh, you know, if they are, they can, uh, they say, you know, some people think that they can, they're time travelers too. There's no time in their world or their dimension. So, uh, am I giving, figuring, um, coming up with this information for them to relay to the ancient people? <laughs> That's pretty neat. So, things that I haven't found out here yet that are in the ancient Egyptian mythologies stories are things that I, I have yet to see in the future. Just kind of hard to get your head around a little bit. So, things I haven't seen here. I've seen most of the gods out here now. But there are some other things yet to come that um, must be something I saw that I see in the future. So that's kind of fun to think about that. But I, so how else, you know, originally when I first put the grid on the globe here, how, and trying to, and wondering out loud, how did ancient man make a globe? How do they map the, all the continents on the globe? And the ETs would be the answer. That would be the, that would be how that happened. Everything works on the globe, you know, just the directions uh, from here, um, everything still fits. So it's just, it was too, it's too perfect for an ancient sea travelers to, to map all that stuff. So I think the ET is a better, is better. Maybe the ETs didn't teach people per se, but they put that information in their head. Uh, so like when we fly out here and you see certain images in the mountainsides and stuff like that, or is that information that's being sent to us through frequencies in the air there that uh, or consciousness that is getting us to look at that stuff, to see it? That's bizarre. I'd hate to be, you know, just a tool in the uh, in their scheme of things. So anyways, uh, if I can see the stuff ancient people could, if they got the same perspective. Some of the stuff you can see from the ground, not much of it though. I have, for, for a while there, I thought maybe you get to the right mountaintop and you can see some of the stuff, but a lot of the stuff you can't, you just can't. Like you gotta get high to see this, this vulture, the hawk, uh, or the falcon, and you know, uh, the lost scepter, stuff like that, you gotta get high up. Newt over here, that you got to get up like 20 miles, 8 to 20 miles to see that stuff. So, uh, but I can see it right now, and we're looking at it right now. That's going out there. They say the acoustic records are everything's made up of energy, and the acoustic records are have all information in them information from the past, present, and future information is all in that. So, if you raise your consciousness, you can tap into that uh, level and see that. So, uh, it's pretty fun to think about. <laughs>